For example, we say curbing the, rise, the rising prices of goods should be the priority of the federal government of the nation. That is, when the price of goods is increasing day by day, then the federal government of a nation should see to it, to see it as the first priority to curb it. That is the ideal thing for the government of that uh, country or nation to do. The other example is that when we say the federal government of a nation ought to concern itself mostly with solving the problem of unemployment. The problem of unemployment is a big problem in any economy. And in that case, the government of such an economy of a nation need to do what? Need to concern itself majorly with it. Need to see it as a big problem that needs to be solved. That is another example of normative economics. The other branches of economics that we have is what we call pure economics and applied economics. When we talk of pure economics, pure economics is concerned with the study of laws and theories derived from the study of economic behaviors. These laws and theories are what guide the, I mean, the, the economist's behavior in an economy. The other one that is there is that of applied economics. Applied economics is concerned with the application of the laws and theories in analyzing and solving the economic problem. The laws and theories, for example, we have the law of demand and supply, we have the theory of consumer behavior. How do we apply these theories to the problem so that the problem will be solved. That is the other branches of economics that we have. That is pure and applied economics. Now, the other subtopic in first, top, uh, in first topic of economics is what we call basic concept of economics. What are these concepts that we are talking about? The first one, we have wants. When we talk of wants in economics, what are we talking about? We said wants are different needs that we see Below one, we have we have means. I mean, means of expressing perceived needs or means. And what are the things that we desire? We say, oh, we want this, we want that. If you ask an individual generally on the street, you say, oh, sir, what do you want? The person may tell you, oh, I want a car, I want a house, I want this, I want that, I want to build mansion, I want to build this, I want to establish this business. Those are wants. What you want? What you desire? Those are they. But when we talk of needs, we are talking of the basic needs of life. What you need at the moment. What you need to survive. What you need to become a person again. And those basic needs of life, we are talking about food, we are talking about water, we are talking about clothing, we are talking about shelter. These basic needs of life are what everybody, whether you are rich or poor, needs to survive. There's nobody that will say he doesn't need food. You don't need food, you will die. You don't need water, you don't take water for some time, someone may not live again. Clothing, no one desires to be walking naked. And some everybody needs to put his or her head somewhere to sleep. So those are the needs of life. And that is why it's different from one. Want is somehow broad, broader, is 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 more elaborate than the needs. Needs are basic needs of life. Now, let's go to the next uh, basic concept. We are talking about scarcity. Scarcity is defined as the limited supply of resources. The resources that we need to meet all these daily needs, all these daily uh, uh, wants and desires, they are limited. And that is when we are talking about scarcity. So, scarcity is talking about the, uh, uh, the, I mean, supply, the limited supply of these resources that are used to satisfy our unlimited wants. Everybody keep desire one thing or the other. That is why even the rich people, they don't sleep. They keep working. Why? Because they still want to achieve one thing or the other. But every day, they still have one want or the other. In other words, scarcity is the inability of human beings to provide themselves with all the things they desire or want. That is scarcity. These resources are scarce and relative to their demand. For example, a student would need to buy school materials such as books that worth 1,000 naira, but she only has 500 naira. In that case, the resources, which is money in this case, is limited. It's not enough for him. He only has 500 naira, whereas what he needs will require him to have 1,000 naira. In that case, 
the need, I mean, the, scarcity, the resources is limited. Therefore, it can be said that the money the student has, has will not be sufficient for him to buy those school materials that he wants he want to, want to buy. Therefore, the available resources, which is 500 naira, within the environment of such a student is not enough to satisfy his wants. That is scarcity. Then, the next one we have to talk about in, on basic of economics, uh, uh, economics, basic concept is scale of preference. Now that we have unli I mean, unlimited wants with the limited resources, meaning that what we want to achieve, what we want to buy, what we desire to acquire, they are more than the resources at hand. In that case, there will be need for us to list all those things one by one in the order of importance. And that is where we are talking about scale of preference. So therefore, scale of preference is defined as a list of unsatisfied ones arranged in the order of their relative importance. Okay. In other words, it is a list of all, uh, it's the list of our wants arranged by priority. For example, a student that needs clothing, school uniform, need pen, need biro, and food. You need to take it one by one, list it one by one, and see whether, okay, this one is more important than this, the other one is more important than this, one after the other. That is the scale of preference. In the scale of preference, the most pressing ones come first, and the least pressing ones come last. That is scale of preference. For example, look at the table. We have, the, for example, the, the table is showing the, the needs of our students. The, in the first one there is shoe. The shoe will cost 3,500 3, naira. The second one we, we said is shirt. The shirt will cost 1,500 naira. The third one is trouser. The trouser will cost 1,700 naira. The fourth one is school bag. The school bag will cost 1,000 naira. And the next is calculator. The calculator will cost in 800 naira. And the last one here is textbooks. The textbook will go for 2,500 naira. If you look at this list of uh, uh, needs and wants, it all goes for 11,000 naira. This is, this is arranged in the order of importance, one after the other. And that is what we refer to as scale of preference. The next basic concept in economics that we have to talk about is choice. Choice can be defined as a system of selecting or choosing one out of a number of alternatives. For example, from that scale of preference, the, the student has been able to choose, oh, let me choose this first, let me choose this one next. That is choice. Women want are many and we cannot satisfy all of them because, all, because our, our resources are limited. The resources to satisfy this want, they are limited. In that case, the, 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 someone needs to decide which of the wants should be satisfied first, which of them should, satis should be satisfied last. In that case, the choice comes up. So choice arises as a result of the resources used sat to satisfy these wants that are limited. Then, choice therefore arises as a result of scarcity of resources. That is the reason why you need to choose according to the order of importance. And the last basic concept here is opportunity cost. Opportunity cost can also be referred to as real cost. Real cost in the sense that is the real, is the original cost of what you want to buy. Therefore, we say opportunity cost is defined as an expression of cost in terms of foregone alternative. It is the satisfaction of one want at the expense of another want. For example, we made mention of a student that wants to buy school materials that cost 1,000 naira the other time, and he has only 500 naira. In that case, the student will have to decide which one should I buy first, which one should I forego, which one should I go for, which one should I let go. In that case, the one, the particular one that the student left behind to satisfy the another one is the real cost of what he bought. That is the opportunity cost. It opportunity cost refers to the ones that are left unsatisfied in order to satisfy another more pressing needs. That is it. Another example we have here. Let's for example a student who has only 20 naira. I want to buy a pen and a book. 
which is more than 20 naira, but he only has 20 naira. In that case, let's assume the student now forgo the goods and will go ahead to buy the pen. Goods in this case is the opportunity cost of the pen that the student buy. Why? Because in that book is the ones that are left satisfied. You will then have to choose which one because the resources are limited. You have to decide which one should I go for, which one is much more important at this moment than the other. Which one can still stay that I will not satisfy, that I will not buy for now. Therefore, the book is what they are sacrificed in order to buy pen. This is the book is the opportunity cost for this. That is, those are the concepts under economics. Now, let's look at the importance of economics. Why do we need to study economics? Economics helps us to allocate resources. We've been saying that our resources to satisfy our wants, they are limited. And our wants are unlimited. So in other case, how do we manage these limited resources? Economics will teach us how to manage it. That is the first importance of economics. It helps us to allocate our scarce resources, our limited resources. The second importance, it helps both individual, firm, and the government to take rational decision, to take decision that, that will bring maximum satisfaction to an individual or a firm or a government. It helps everybody in the society. The third one, it assists government to determine the expected income and the expenditure. For a government to run very well, to function and perform excellently, it needs to speculate.